Hello, I'm Akshay Desai. Uh, I'm the director of the Cardiomyopathy and Heart Failure Program in the Cardiovascular Division at Brigham Women's Hospital, and I'm presenting these data regarding finerenone in patients with a recent worsening heart failure event from the Fine Arts HF trial. The rationale for this analysis is that patients with heart failure in a recent worsening heart failure event, whether in hospital or out of hospital, are known to be at high risk for recurrent heart failure and hospitalization and death across the spectrum of ejection fraction. From the Fine Arts HF primary results, we know that treatment with the non-steroidal mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist finerenone reduced the risk of composite cardiovascular death and total worsening heart failure events in patients with mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction. And we also know that Fine Arts deliberately targeted patients who were enrolled in the hospital and those who had had a recent worsening heart failure event uh, for enrollment with the proportion of those without a recent worsening heart failure event prospectively capped at about 50% of the population. And so this gives us an opportunity in a pre-specified analysis to really explore uh, the uh, safety and efficacy of finerenone in relationship to the timing uh, of, uh, of enrollment relative to the recency of a worsening heart failure event. The fine arts study design is uh, included uh, was a randomized prospective double-blind placebo-controlled trial of finerenone versus placebo in patients with symptomatic heart failure and an left ventricular ejection fraction more than 40%. As mentioned, both hospitalized patients and recently hospitalized patients were eligible for enrollment in addition to those with chronic heart failure remote from a hospitalization or worsening heart failure event. Patients had to have elevated natriuretic peptide levels and evidence of structural heart disease and were randomized to either 20 or 40 milligrams of finerenone after dose titration, depending on renal function or matching placebo. 6,001 patients were validly randomized, uh, and the primary endpoint was the composite of cardiovascular death and total heart failure events with a number of key secondary endpoints explored. The methods for this analysis were that patients randomized within the fine arts trial were grouped into categories according to the time from their most recent worsening heart failure event to randomization into three groups uh, 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 what, uh, what, that were defined by either during or within seven days of a worsening heart failure event between seven days and three months or more than three months, uh, which was grouped with those who had not had a worsening heart failure event. The risk of the primary composite outcome and the treatment effect of finerenone versus placebo according to the time from worsening heart failure was evaluated in semi parametric proportional rates models according to the method of Lin et al. using an interaction term. The risk of key secondary outcomes, including the time to first occurrence of CV death or heart failure hospitalization, overall mortality, and composite renal events was analyzed in Cox proportional hazard models. And then odds ratios according to treatment assignment uh, and time from worsening heart failure for key adverse events, including drug discontinuation, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, hypotension, and change in kidney function were examined in logistic regression models with an interaction term. This is the population of fine arts HF segregated according to the time from worsening heart failure categories. As you can see, the patients enrolled proximate to a worsening heart failure event were less likely to have had a myocardial infarction, but more likely to have had a heart failure hospitalization and were sicker with a higher prevalence of atrial fibrillation, lower systolic blood pressure, more advanced renal disease with lower EGFR, lower ejection fraction, and higher N-terminal pro-BNP and, uh, and worse New York Heart Association functional class. These are the clinical event rates according to the time from worsening heart failure for randomization. And if we focus on the primary composite endpoint, you can see that event rates in those within seven days or enrolled during a worsening heart failure event were nearly twofold. Those enrolled remotely from a heart failure event or without worsening heart failure. Um, with uh, uh, um, And these this pattern of... Uh, of risk uh, gradient over the categories really uh, was consistent across all of the endpoints examined. When we look at the treatment effect of finerenone according to the time from worsening heart failure to randomization for the primary composite outcome, there was this interesting observation of a more pronounced signal of event reduction in those within seven days of a worsening heart failure event. Um, uh, and a lesser signal of treatment benefit that with those farther out from the event. But when we looked formally 
for a treatment by time interaction, none was apparent. And indeed, when we looked at the time to first occurrence of CV death or worsening heart failure, this same pattern was a little less pronounced, uh, although the treatment effects were also greatest in those uh, less than or equal to seven days without uh, an important treatment interaction term. When we looked at the effect of safety of finerenone according to time from worsening heart failure to randomization, or sorry, if we look at the absolute risk reductions with finerenone according to the time from worsening heart failure to randomization, we can see the same gradient of risk reduction with absolute risk reductions, but here now statistically more pronounced, uh, with the greatest absolute risk reduction seen in those highest risk within the enrolled within the first seven days of a worsening heart failure event, and the lowest absolute risk reductions in those enrolled further out from their worsening heart failure episode. This trend to absolute risk reductions was again less pronounced when looking at the time to first event. When we expanded the categorization to separate out those enrolled in hospital or during a worsening heart failure event from those without worsening heart failure in a five category model, the same trend seemed to be apparent with the greatest treatment benefits seen amongst those enrolled within the first three months of a worsening heart failure event and lesser benefits seen further out uh, with a trend for absolute risk reduction that was significant regardless of the formulation of the endpoint. So uh, with regard to risk of adverse events, there was no treatment interaction uh, by time from worsening heart failure for any of the key adverse events, uh, including worsening renal function, hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, or hyper hypotension, uh, though there was a slightly higher signal of risk for discontinuation of finerenone uh, versus or study drug uh, more than three months out from a worsening heart failure event compared to those enrolled proximate to a worsening heart failure event. And so we conclude that patients with mildly reduced or preserved EF who've had a recent, recent episode of worsening heart failure were at higher risk for subsequent overall mortality, cardiovascular death, and heart failure events, regardless of whether the worsening heart failure episode was a hospitalized or an ambulatory event. Although the reduction in the relative risk of total worsening heart failure events and CV death appeared to be larger with finerenone for those enrolled in close proximity to worsening heart failure, no formal treatment interaction was seen, and the trend was less pronounced in a time to first event analysis. A trend to greater absolute risk reduction with finerenone was seen in those with recent worsening heart failure compared to those enrolled further out from a worsening heart failure event. And finerenone similarly increased risk of hypotension, hyperkalemia, and worsening renal function, and lowered risk of hypokalemia in those with and without recent worsening heart failure. So these data support a favorable balance of safety and efficacy in, uh, of finerenone in patients with mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction heart failure who have had a recent worsening heart failure event. Further data uh, and confirmation of these results will be available in future trials uh, that are specifically targeted uh, at the worsening heart failure population, including redefine HF and confirmation HF. So uh, thanks very much. And uh, Teresa, I'll hand it to you uh, for any comments you might have. Thanks very much, Ashke. So I'm Therese McDonough, and I'm the clinical uh, lead for heart failure at King's College Hospital in, in London. And so it's really nice to see this. Obviously, we've all been excited about fine arts, the very first study of um, an MRA and indeed an inhibitor of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system to meet its primary endpoint in those with ejection fractions above 40%. So it's nice to go into a little bit more of the granularity here of what's happening. Um, so in terms of, we're, we're seeing a, a bigger effect in terms of the composite endpoint in those with a recent worsening heart failure event. Um, in terms of think, is that is it just the composite endpoint that's significantly reduced, or do we see cardiovascular death significantly reduced, or is it just a trend? Yeah, so I think it's always with the caveats that come from looking at subgroups, although these were pre-specified analyses of the Fine yeah. Arts HF trial, uh, I think what we see is that the trend is most pronounced when looking at the composite event, uh, yeah. event which is the, the primary composite, which is first and recurrent worsening heart failure in addition to CV death as uh, in that uh, recurrent events model, the Lin, Wei, Yin, and Yang mm -hmm. model. Um, mm -hmm. When we look at time to first event, whether it be for cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization, the traditional trial endpoint, 
or for the other endpoints, CV death alone, overall mortality, the same gradient uh, is seen, but statistically it is less visible than it is in the primary composite endpoint. Um, and I think this means that it's very difficult to conclude definitively, particularly given the multiple interactions that are tested here and um, uh, and the fact that this trial wasn't powered for analysis mm. of these subgroups, yeah. that there is a definitive gradient. But it does look like, well, particularly when we look at the absolute risk reductions, that the recently hospitalized benefit patients benefit at least as much, perhaps more, and the safety doesn't appear to be any worse uh, uh, in that population. So I think we can confidently say that the recently hospitalized patients enrolled in fine arts got at least as much benefit uh, and a similar safety profile, and it would at least support use in that population in addition to the broader population of fine arts. That's great, yeah. Um, in terms of clinicians trying to interpret this data, I suppose people could make the mistake of assuming that it's only worth using phenerinone in people who've having who've had a recent worsening event and that there's less benefit for those who have more chronic heart failure, which is stable. Obviously, the, the interaction, the p-value, there's no actual interaction in terms of the heterogeneity, so we shouldn't interpret the data in that way. But uh, I, I think as a clinician, I would... I would like to be reassured that we should be using it in the population as a whole who were tested in fine arts. I, I don't know what your your uh, your take on that is. Uh, no, I think that's a critical point, uh, yeah. uh, and I would I, I'm so glad that you brought it up because I do think that the 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 concern for emphasizing the treatment benefit in the recent worsening heart failure population is the obverse, which is that maybe there's less benefit further out. I, I think it's important in looking at these subgroups that we not that we remember that the primary trial result is should govern as we think mm -hmm. about um, this, and that there was no formal statistical interaction, which means that phenerinone reduced the composite endpoint regardless of the subgroup in which patients were enrolled. Um, mm -hmm. I just think it is an important hypothesis generating result that the treatment signal appears to be numerically greater with a marginal interaction in, uh, for the primary composite, if not for other endpoints in that recent worsening group, which really opens the door to an even greater benefit in that high risk population. Uh, so I think it's not that there's no benefit further out, it's just that the benefits may be amplified in those proximate to a recent worsening event. And so in that population, which we know is at risk, maybe there's even further uh, am ammunition for consideration uh, of MRAs in that subgroup. Yeah. And I suppose we're seeing here with this trial and with phenerinone actually very similar results to other trials, particularly with RNA SGLT2 inhibitors. They, they, they also show this in, this um, bigger effect perhaps in patients with recent worsening heart failure than uh, in patients with more stable heart failure. And yet we, we give these drugs routinely to everybody in terms of um, the indication for the primary for the primary composite endpoint. No, I think that's a, a entirely appropriate. And I think uh, uh, I, I, I think we would we would argue that the overall fine arts data would argue that the application of phenerinone uh, should be for the broad population of patients who met the trial inclusion criteria, which would be those with mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction, uh, regardless of their proximity to worsening heart failure hospitalization who meet the enrollment criteria for the trial. And, and I think this data sits on top of predicate data from TopCat uh, of, yeah. of, a, of a steroidal MRA uh, that suggests uh, that there is value to use of mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists uh, across the spectrum of left ventricular ejection fraction more than 40%. Mm -hmm. And I think we now have uh, perhaps a second um, uh, foundational therapy on top of SGLT2 inhibitors for, um, for uh, some of these patients uh, with uh, uh, heart failure and higher ejection fraction. Interesting. Just to turn to ejection fraction, obviously you've got a range here of ejection fractions above 40%. So some in the mildly reduced category between 40 and 50, which 
these patients tend to behave like HEF ref patients and then above 50 and truly into the HEF PEF range. Did you see any a difference in terms of um, how these patients behaved with recent worsening heart failure events versus not according to the rejection fraction? So uh, uh, we did not look specifically at that two-way interaction uh, mm. by recent worsening heart failure and ejection fraction um, because it would have been cutting the data quite small. But at the same time, uh, there was a separate analysis uh, 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 presented by uh, Dr. McMurray at the recent Heart Failure Society meeting and published in circulation adjacent to this paper uh, mm. in Jack that really suggests that uh, there was no variation in the treatment effect of finerenone in the broader fine arts trial uh, by uh, the enrollment ejection fraction. And that was true even for patients with higher ejection fraction with the caveat that there weren't a large proportion of patients with supranormal EF uh, enrolled. So the power to examine treatment effects in that very high EF population uh, was a little bit limited. But the best data we have suggests that the treatment effect is consistent across the range of LVEF greater than 40%. Yeah, and I suppose the other thing in terms of um, thinking about how clinicians should uh, actually implement this data, we obviously know from the strong HF trial that uh, intensifying therapy when patients are an in where our inpatients, whether they have HEF ref or indeed HEF PEF, and then getting on with things quickly uh, as an outpatient confers benefits actually in terms of all cause mortality and improvement in hospitalizations. Would you recommend looking at this data wherever possible, starting for neuronos as an inpatient uh, in you know for these patients? Well, I think that you know the other analysis that's been done for the overall trial is a time to benefit analysis, which mm -hmm. suggested that for the overall population, the treatment benefits for the primary were apparent within two weeks of initiation of the mm -hmm. study drug. And I think that in that that these data sort of layered on that would make a compelling argument that um, although one shouldn't wait for a hospitalization to start the drug, uh, that certainly once hospitalization has happened, that patient has declared themselves as a very high risk patient. And we should begin to think about even in hospital initiation. And at least these data, I think quite reassuringly suggest that there's no added safety concern, safety. which would be which would be really the principal concern clinicians might have because of all the dynamic features of treatment during hospitalization. So I do think that that is a logical extension of, of these data. And you know, we'll look forward to how regulators view them. That's great. Well, that's a, a great new insight into fine arts and uh, in terms of um, in terms of how we're going to use Phenarin and, and thinking about particularly getting it on board quickly in patients with worsening recent worsening heart failure. So thanks very much for that. Thank you.